Winter squash is so delicious and really popular for its versatility. It can be cooked so many ways. Simple with salt and butter, or you can spice it up for an incredible taste experience. Today, we're preparing squash the North African way with Moroccan spiced squash and chickpea tagine. I'm Chef Heidi Fink, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Thanks so much for joining me. Today, we're going to Morocco, which is one of my favorite culinary destinations. Moroccan cuisine is known for its tender stews, its fluffy couscous, and its spicy sauces. But I'm not talking about chilies. Moroccan spices are subtle and flavorful. Are you ready for some North African flavor? We're making Moroccan spice squash and chickpea tagine. This meatless meal will warm you from the inside out. Let's get started. So the first thing that I wanna talk about are the onions. Because this meal is vegetarian, you can actually make this with chicken if you want, but because we're starting with a vegetarian meal, the most important thing is cooking the onions properly. So properly cooked onions to develop a rich flavor should be cooked for 10, 15, even 20 minutes until they're almost caramelized. And that gives you a rich underpinning of flavor for your stew and so you won't even miss the meat at all. So I've already had these cooking for about 10 minutes. I'm just gonna bring the heat up right now so that they're back to sizzling. So you can take a look at that beautiful color. They're translucent, they're soft. Mm, they smell, they smell really oniony and really good. And then we're gonna be adding some minced garlic. I have six cloves of minced garlic there. And then a whole bunch of spices. We have cumin, we have cayenne. You can use just a little bit or a lot depending on how spicy you like it. We have turmeric, um, a little bit of cinnamon. That's what sets Moroccan cuisine apart. It's just a little bit sweet. And some coriander seed, as well as our garlic. Now our onions, we're gonna bring them up to temperature here, yes. Once they're sizzling, we can add the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna pre-measure all of my spices so I can dump them in at the exact same time. So we need a teaspoon of ground cumin, teaspoon of coriander, half a teaspoon of turmeric, half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I forgot one of the spices actually. Uh, paprika, we're gonna be adding that. A teaspoon of paprika. And I'm just gonna put a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. You can definitely add more if you like. Like I said before, Moroccan food isn't known to be really spicy, it's just full flavor. So these onions are sizzling beautifully, you can see that. I was cooking them in a mixture of olive oil and butter. You can use just olive oil if you want. We're gonna throw in some minced garlic. I have six cloves of minced garlic right here. And then I always like to saute the spices. That really helps bring out the flavor and the smell. Oh, seriously, one of my favorite, favorite spice combinations. Just having them go into the warm oil like that just fills the kitchen with aroma. Now once these have sauteed for a few seconds, you wanna make sure not to burn them, you just want them to bring out the flavor. We're gonna add some tomato. So what I'm using right here is um, my favorite passata tomato. I find if you use crushed tomatoes, it's too thick and pasty. Now one of the secrets to cooking a really good spice mixture like this is simmering it until the sauce separates and the oil floats on the surface, if you can see that, because it really helps bring out the full flavor of the spices. So we're gonna let that simmer for a few minutes, and while that's simmering, we are gonna work on the couscous. Most of us think of couscous as a grain. It is a grain product, but it's actually a tiny miniature pasta. So it's not suitable if you are on a gluten-free diet. The dish itself is gluten-free, so you could have it with rice or quinoa, but I wanted to keep it traditional. Now, traditionally in Morocco, you actually serve stews like this with bread. This is called a tagine. A tagine is another name for stew in Morocco, which is also the name of the pot it's usually served in, which has a triangular lid. But we're just gonna cook this in a 
normal pot because it works the same way. It just doesn't look as pretty. Um, so couscous is usually served as a separate dish, but I like to serve them together. It looks really dramatic on the plate. And also a lot of people um, struggle with making couscous properly because the instructions on the couscous box are not that good. So we're gonna bring, we have a cup and a half of water that I'm bringing to a boil. I'm gonna put a little pat of butter in there. And we're also going to put a quarter teaspoon of salt or a pinch of salt. There we go. We're gonna bring it to a boil. We're gonna throw our couscous in there. So that's actually, that's actually what it says on the back of the box, but I, I will be telling you a second step to make it really fluffy. When you make it just this way, you throw it in the water, you let it sit for 10 minutes. It's edible, but it's kind of clumpy. So I will be showing you, after the break, I'll be showing you how to fluff it up nicely. It doesn't take long at all. So as soon as that comes to a boil, we'll just throw our couscous in there. That's, and the butter will melt. Here we are. This is what I love about induction. It's power boil city. Okay, so as soon as it comes to a boil, you turn it off and you throw the couscous in there. You stir it up. You put the lid on and you just let it sit for 10 minutes. Now this right here, while I've been doing the couscous, you can see that the oil is just starting to separate around these little bubbles and it's starting to smell so good. I can't wait. We're gonna have to let this simmer for probably 10 more minutes. So we'll be back later in the show to bring this together. But first, we're on the road. We'll see you after the break. Cooking on the Road is brought to you by Country Grocer, your local store where you'll feel like family. I'm here in Esquimalt in the kitchen with Ruby Apal of Ruby's Pecoras, and I'm really excited to learn all about your business. I've seen your product in some grocery stores. Can you tell me how you got started? Well, it was just by accident, really. I have a commercial cleaning business, and one of my clients liked my pecoras when I would occasionally take them in for a meeting uh -huh. and told me I should sell them. And um, I started just with pecoras, uh -huh. and, uh, and then after a couple years, of people saying, oh, your pecoras are really good. You should do samosas too. <laughs> I didn't want to do the samosas, but here I am now doing the samosas. And you make everything here from we scratch. We make everything here from scratch. Um, my family's homemade recipes oh, that amazing. we're now doing it in, in, in a bigger kitchen. And where can you buy your products? They're available at most of the grocery stores on Vancouver Island and on the Lower Mainland. Oh, okay, that's so exciting. Everything smells fantastic. And I see, I think I'm getting a lesson here on how to make Yes, you samosas. are. Okay. So um, this is uh, the mixture for our samosas. Yeah. It's just your basic onions, potatoes, and some spices. Just okay. the real authentic stuff. Okay, yeah. okay. So you grab one of the pre-folded sheets that our staff has already made for us. Okay, that's handy. Thanks, staff. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're going to just um, fill it with the potato mixture. Okay. Okay, we've got it packed in there. Yes, and now we're going to use our glue, which is just flour and water. Okay, let's see, let's see. So I go up the sides, okay, all around. And you can be liberal with this because okay. once it's deep fried, you it just blends in. Okay. So basically take the point to this point. Okay, all the way down? Yeah, all the way down. Okay. And you're gonna give this side a squeeze. Okay. Okay. Right, and now, just fold, fold over. it over. Okay. Squeeze on this side. Okay. And you got your triangle. <laughs> Hopefully mine doesn't explode in the fryer. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. So we're going to deep fry these and uh, okay. I'm not going to get you to deep fry them. Don't want you to burn your hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. All right. I can't wait to see it. Okay. So here's our tray of uh, finished uh, samosas that we filled up. Okay. We had some help. Yeah. And now um, we're going to deep fry them into the canola oil. Oh wow, look at that. So when customers get these, you, they, they get them cooked, so they just have to They get them, them the cooked, yes. And same thing with the pakora. Yes, and they just need to be heated up in the oven. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to deep fry them again. Okay. Ooh, those look really good. Thank you, I hope you're hungry. I am. So now that they're all finished cooking, uh, we're ready to eat them. Okay, I am so excited. Okay, let's go. Yay! 
Looks so good. I can't wait to try one. Oh, I can't wait to have you try these. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is it okay if I just load up? Yes, my and it's mango apple chutney. It's actually something that um, I tried, you know, experimenting with different mm. things and uh, and finally perfected the recipe because most mango chutney is just mangoes, mm -hmm. but I've added uh, apple to mine. And uh, that is now incredible. It's a slightly unique mango apple chutney. Mm. I wish I could get this delivered. Actually, you can because really? I have a daily Tiffin service oh, wow. that goes out to local Victorians on a daily basis. Wow, yeah. this is incredible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing this with me. This is delicious. Oh, thank you. I love hearing your story. This is great. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for coming. It's my absolutely, pleasure. Absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you. Hope you don't mind if I just keep eating. Oh, no. Eating. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm so glad you made it back. The oil on this Moroccan chickpea and squash tagine is at the perfect stage to start adding our vegetables. You can see the little pockets of oil pooling on the top like this. That's when the spices are at their richest and perfectly cooked. Now we can stir it in. And what I'm going to do at this point is add some vegetables. You, wanna, you can use whatever vegetables you like. Today I'm using cauliflower, chickpeas, and winter squash, and also some little green peas. The most important thing about this is that the vegetables need to be partially cooked ahead of time. Whether you roast them or blanch them, whatever you do, you just have to cook them part way. That's because tomatoes are very high in something called citric acid, and citric acid actually prevents vegetables from breaking down and cooking properly. So that might be why if you've ever made like a vegetarian chili or something, that it just took forever. Because tomatoes help firm up vegetables. So my favorite vegetables to use for this are butternut squash and cauliflower. Um, I don't have time to show you to cook them, but I have some that are already cooked right here, the magic of TV. And I added some currants to this. This is very typical of Moroccan cooking that you add some dried fruit to your stews, so you could use whatever you want. So I'm putting these in right now. And you wanna add a little bit of liquid. I saved some of the liquid from when I blanched the vegetables, so that's almost like a vegetable broth. Easy way to make vegetable broth. I'm gonna add that about a cup. And also I have some canned chickpeas. I used one can, which is about one and a half cups. If you have your own cooked chickpeas, you could use that. The other thing that I need to add to this is some salt, probably about a teaspoon. Salt to taste. And then, we'll just turn that up, we'll bring it to a simmer. We need to let this simmer for, ideally you would let this simmer for 10 to 20 minutes for the flavors to really absorb, but we'll just simmer it as long as we can. I just wanna make sure that everything is nicely coated. You want that cauliflower nicely coated. This is smelling amazing. When I first became vegetarian years ago, this was my go-to vegetarian dish, and it's never come off the rotation, even after I started eating meat again. Sometimes I've added chicken to it, um, but you know what, it's so satisfying like this. Now here is our couscous. You can see what it looks like right now. It's kind of clumped up. I'll show you, I'm gonna dump it out onto this tray. So a lot of the time when you make couscous like this, you get big clumps. If you've ever been to Morocco and you've ever had couscous, you'll know that the couscous is unbelievably fluffy, light, and tender. I'm just gonna put this in the sink. And for traditional couscous is a process that takes hours. We don't have that kind of time, so I'm just gonna show you sort of a quick shortcut to produce fluffy couscous. So what we do is we just spread it out on this tray, and once it's cool enough to handle, Ideally, it would be a bit longer, so I'm just gonna burn my hands slightly while I fluff it up, or I'll use this spoon. Usually I use my hands and kind of just brush it like that. It's actually really, really fun. It feels so good in your hands. But I'm gonna just use a spoon so I don't burn myself. And spread it out. Break up those clumps. Now we'll fluff this up. And just kind of break up the clumps, like I said. You don't want any um, lumps of couscous. You want it to be really, really light and fluffy. Then I'm going to put this in a casserole dish. If you have one with a lid, you could use that. I'm just, I just have my trusty little eight by eight pan. 
We're gonna transfer it in and you're gonna dot this with a little bit of olive oil and butter and put a little bit of water or broth in there and cover it and then just heat it up in the oven for about 10 minutes. And you can do this a day ahead if you want. Keep it in the, um, keep it in the fridge until you're ready. I'll put this in the sink. Okay, now we're just gonna put that in there. We will drizzle a little bit of olive oil on it, just a tiny bit for extra flavor. Measure olive oil with your heart. And then a tiny little bit of water. You don't wanna sog this up, you just want enough so that there's a little bit of steam to kind of fluff up the couscous. And then you cover it. If you had a lid, you would use a lid, otherwise very tightly with foil. And then I'm gonna go to the oven and you're gonna just put that in the oven for 10 to 20 minutes, depending on how much time you have. And you can keep it warm as long as you like. And you can see with the magic of TV, I have another one in there, but I forgot my oven mitts. So I'm just gonna get those, some towels and grab this. I'll just put this down right there. And now, the reveal. It'll be more noticeable once we put it on the plate. But you end up with really light and fluffy, fluffy couscous. <laughs> so much better than the way you make it in the, with the box. This is smelling and looking delicious. We're gonna get ready to plate it. I just have to add my peas to that. So I just have baby frozen peas here. I ran them in some hot water so they're thawed out. They don't need to cook. And you wanna put them in at the last minute so they keep their beautiful color. I'm just gonna taste this, make sure it doesn't need any salt, and then we'll be ready to make a beautiful plate of Moroccan tagine with couscous. Look at how delicious this is, oh man. Let me get a tasting spoon, not a serving spoon. So this would probably taste even better if I let it simmer a bit longer. Mmm. Mmm. So good. I can't wait to dig in. Let's get a couple of plates here. Mm. I got stuck in my teeth. Because couscous isn't normally served with the tagine, or at least not traditionally in Morocco, I'll just show you how I do it. I just think this looks really beautiful and dramatic. I put a couple of scoops of, oh, and spill it. A couple of scoops of couscous in on the plate, and then I make a, like a nest for my beautiful tagine. I just think the presentation looks really nice. That way the fluffy couscous that you've worked so hard to make isn't getting instantly soggy from the tagine. Then we get our serving spoon. I'm gonna turn this off. Get our serving spoon. I'm gonna bring this close so I don't spill. And we'll put a little bit of this beautiful tagine in the center. Making sure that everybody gets an equal amount of squash, cauliflower, and chickpeas. And then sometimes I like to sprinkle it with a few toasted nuts and also some fresh herbs. I've got some flat leaf parsley and some cilantro here. I'm just gonna put a couple of fronds on there. Not really chop, you could chop it easily, but this tastes really good. They use a lot of uh, parsley and cilantro in Morocco, so this way you can do both. I'm just gonna move this out of the way and clean up my couscous here. If I were in the restaurant, I would just throw this on the floor, but we won't do that right now. There you have it. A warm and satisfying Moroccan spice squash and chickpea tagine. It's a vegetarian meal that will warm you from the inside out. Pairings are brought to you by Liquor Plus. Discover the plus. I'm very curious to know what would pair well with this meatless meal with all the warming spices. So to help me out is Andrea from Grey Monk Winery. What have you got for us? So today we brought our newest wine. It's called the Monk's Blend. It is a red wine, 70% mm -hmm. Syrah, 30% Cap Sauv. Mm -hmm. It's a delicious medium bodied silky red wine. Lots of nice fruit, a little bit of oak. I think it would be beautiful with the spices in this. Okay, let's try it out. All right. It's not common to serve 
a red wine with a spicy meal like this, but you're saying that the medium body of it would work really well? Yeah, you can um, pair red wine with a spicy meal. I mean, you just need to keep the heaviness of the wine and the heaviness of the food kind of paired. Okay. You don't want one to overpower the other. Right, okay, yeah. okay. Let's try this out. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Okay, yep, I'm picking up some very fruity flavors. Yep. It's quite rich. Yep. I'm it's got some see. nice silky tannins too, which is nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's not oaky at all. Very lightly oaked. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm taking too big of a bite. It's so good that I want to try it. Mmm. Mmm. I'm going to try this with the wine. That's delicious. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I see where you're going with that. Mm-hmm. Yep. It almost makes the spices like bloom in your mouth. It actually. really does. Yeah. So that's what you want to do with mm -hmm. wine is you want yeah. to pair the wine and the food so the flavor pops. Right. So you don't want any competing or canceling. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the fruitiness of this, it's almost, I would say it's almost like a chutney. You know what I mean? That's what I got too yeah. from the, the vegetables and the wine kind of made a chutney flavor. Yeah, it yeah. did. It's good because, I mean, they don't typically serve chutney with Moroccan food, but it has some similar flavor profiles to oh, Indian okay. food. So we would serve something fruity with that. So that was an excellent pairing. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Um, what can you tell us a bit about the winery, Grey Monk? Yeah, so Grey Monk uh, was established in 1972, so one of the older wineries oh. from the Okanagan. Is it the oldest one? I wouldn't say it's the oldest, oh. but it's right up right there up with there. the older okay. ones. Yeah. Uh, so it's located in Lake Country, which is about 30 minutes, I would say, north of Kelowna. Maybe okay. a little longer than that. Beautiful location, beautiful estate winery overlooking one of the nice lakes there. It's stunning. It's a beautiful winery. And they grow all their own grapes. Absolutely. Their own wines. Yeah. Absolutely, it's a VQA winery. Okay, yeah. So this one, what did you say? It was a 70% cab, Syrah, 30% cab. That's right. And I heard that Grey Monk has one of the most popular, was it Pinot Gris in? Yes, so our Pinot Gris is the number one Pinot Gris in all of BC. Okay. It is delicious. All right. Well, maybe next time I'll get to try your Pinot Gris. Maybe I'll leave you some. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, cheers. We would love to see your take on this meal. Share your photo on social media and tag us at Chef Heidi Fink and at Czech Media. For more information on the recipes, just follow the links below. I'm Chef Heidi Fink. The more you learn, the better it tastes.